this time, Commissioner Keller is going to lead us in our prayer. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight to just ask your blessing on all our decisions. We thank you, Lord, for living here in Catoosa County and all the good life that you have praised and given us. And dear Lord, we just ask your uh, guidance and blessing in all of our decisions. We pray for all the citizens and the families and the grandchildren. And Lord, we pray for the United States, the great state of Georgia, and Catoosa County. In your name we pray, amen. amen. Salute. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Flooded all the time, <coughs> and it's called Pot Sinkhole. Whether y'all are familiar with it or not, Charles might be. I don't know. Uh, but uh, the problem I'm having is uh, him and some time back had uh, converted some water running into this sinkhole where the Lord had told them that they didn't, you know, there would be any more water running into that sinkhole than what had already come into the subdivision there, and. Um, Two different places. Uh, one place is done the circle behind my house. They cut out some curbing in there, about five or six foot of curbing in there. Didn't put a catch basin in. Didn't put a backdrop in it or anything. They just dumped it off into my lot, on my property. And I'm um, continuously being flooded. And I've got two pictures I'd like to show you. Let me see a couple of pictures. This is a back door. It's going to be Larry Ball. 
I'd like to know why those checks were written off the general fund, and there may be a logical explanation, I don't know. But when you write checks like that, shouldn't you write it off of the whatever organization is paying for it? That, that is my question. Also, we had a little girl leave the county and go to work for the state, Taylor Kelty, that worked for the economic development. When she left, she was making $38,000 a year plus her benefits. We hired a person that is from another economic development group at $70,000. Don't y'all think we're setting a precedent here uh, because that don't seem hardly fair that you had a person leave here at $38,000 and hire someone for $70,000. That just doesn't make a lot of logical sense uh, because I think you're setting yourself up maybe for discrimination somewhere along the line. And trust me, if that was me, I would be hunting me a real good attorney. Thank you. Maybe I'm sure Greg were to attend it. Is Richard Grove in there? Come on, that picture. Good evening. Glad to be here. I'm here looking for approval of the. Uh, Hoopla Service Agreement. Hoopla is a digital library. You have ebooks, audiobooks, movies, music. Uh, so it's available to anyone with a Patusa County Library card 24-7, uh, no matter when the library is open, uh, which is great because everybody can't always be at the library when the library is open. So this would expand the library's reach to everyone in the community. Anybody with a smartphone, anybody with internet access would effectively have increased access to library services. Um, there's a $12,000 deposit because it is a on-demand program. So as soon as a patron downloads an item, the vendor then owns the publisher for that license. So I'm here looking for approval for this service tonight. So moved. Where's the funding? Is it in your grant budget or? We have SPOS funding <coughs> and state grant funding that we did use. Yes. Yeah. You're saying that it would be put out as people use it? Yes. Is this, can somebody, do they have to be a county resident or can anybody in the nation use it? No, it is going to be limited to people with only our library card and it has already been tested with the vendor. That restrictions they will have to have a library card just for Catoosa County. And we can put limits in place as well for the number of downloads someone can do every month. Um, so in other words, we don't rack up thirty, forty thousand dollars in charges. It'll be limited to whatever we decide. Was this grant just for this? No, the library receives a state grant every year based on our population as well as materials grant based, again, on population from the state government. Um, so we utilize those grants for all of our services and quite a bit of our materials as well. Carl, I guess this would be a question for you. Can the SPLOSH be used for this? I suppose used for our library materials, yes. Thank you. 
other than SKB. And so we uh, got SKB to give us a proposal. Um, it was roughly the same that we were playing part-time employees. So to standardize everyone who does like jobs, um, SKB gave us a price of $13.24.80 a month, which was $15,897.60. Um, Carl reviewed it, and that was roughly what we were paying part-time employees. So uh, SKB, uh, they, they're going to move forward, and we're going to move forward with them to So it just kind of cleans it up. Because that person was answering to me, and not one us, did I ever already ever say it. So uh, it wasn't, that was a question when I kind of took the job was, you know, why, why are they reporting to me? Because I just, I, I didn't supervise them, so. Uh, so now the total contract for SKB would be, it would go up 15, 8, 9, 9, 7, 60 to 169, 257, 26. Yeah, so, so, the budget will go up 15, but we'll that yes. money back now. That, that money is coming from the building maintenance side going to. The SKP. Uh, so, yeah. So, that's our big missing. We're just trading dollars. It's wash. It's a wash. Yeah. Absolutely. What's some of the um, other maintenance that they? I mean, uh, cleaning that they do. What's another building? Oh, this building. All. I mean, all helpful. So the only thing they weren't building was the library. Now that was the only job. So now we want it all. Yes. We've done. We changed that. And like I said, I, I didn't. I had very little contact with them. They just it didn't make any sense. So. All in favor of approving this, say aye. Tonight we're here to accept a donation from Shirley for the operation and uh, programming of the amphitheater. And she uh, puts puts on a big event each year at the amphitheater, and I want to give her a second to tell us about it. Okay. These gentlemen probably have seen me a few times. Thank you. It's nice to see you guys again. Sorry, commissioners. I should not call you guys. But uh, in September of last year, and you all know about September of last year because you were kind enough to be there and do a wonderful thing for the West Smith family. Uh, last year, Smith, West Smith and West and Friends held an inaugural benefit for the West and Charlotte Smith Charitable Endowment. And thanks to the wonderful support, we have been able to start our journey to help our communities. If I could, I'd like to tell you a little bit about how we got started and why we got started and what, where we're going from there. Uh, the endowment was started when Wesley passed away in January of 2015. And while it was live, Wesley was very personally involved in this community, pioneered Northwest Georgia Bank Foundation to better benefit the community. And his wish to us before he died was that when the bank was gone, that we would be able to continue what had been done with that. During his time with the foundation, um, and for the 40th, for the 100th birthday of the Northwest Georgia Bank, an amphitheater was built and given to the community. He did school, system academics, the band, athletics, all were recipients of his generosity. The Learning Center, the Colonnade Theater, and various other community buildings were given their start. When the tornado ripped through Ringo in 2011, they were the first to give COAD $50,000 to help us start the rebuild and gave more later on also. These are just a small handful of things.
things that were, were done during that time. And we've been lucky enough to honor his his name and his wishes by doing the Weston Shirley Smith Charitable Endowment. And what we want to do is start our fun fundraising and start by giving $5,000 to the amphitheater. And that's to be used for, I think there was lighting and uh, plug-ins and things that are extra. He goes to right there. This is my grandbaby. This is Weston Smith's grandbaby. This is Christmas baby. But it's all a family business, and, and we're all out here doing things for the community. And uh, we are entrusting that all that will be done. They've been wonderful to help us with, with the, the thing we started out in September. And I think uh, the bank was the first one to hold one out there when it started. They had a, a lot of things out there. It's, it is a jewel. The whole campus, the Benton Place campus out there, is a jewel in uh, in Caducey County, and I know that you feel that way too. But this is just the beginning. This, as as we grow and do more, we will give more. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'll wait
this way. I'll give you a hint, okay? It's the 40th anniversary of something. <laughs> I can't say it already. Dukes of Hazard. Oh, yeah. I didn't say it. <laughs> Acceptance of the uh, new program initiative grant for GRPA is a $1,000 uh, non-matching grant. Um, I'd like to first recognize uh, Kim, if you would stand up, please. Uh, she was actually the author of the grant for the department. I stand up here, and everybody thinks I do everything, but I can't. Uh, not without a great staff. But she's also a homeschool parent, so she saw the need in the community and more people that I talked to said, you know, nobody supported homeschool uh, to their liking. So uh, it's a way to program our gyms during the day when they're not being used at all. So we're getting maximum usage out of our facilities. Uh, the class has been a success. It's definitely great in the winter months. They have to get the PE credits. Um, and it was a program that the State of Georgia Parks and Rec Association said that maybe it would be duplicated around uh, and other counties to help other people maximize use of their facilities. So this is actually our third grant we've received in the last six months non-matching. Uh, Chelsea has been first and foremost in teaching her archery class. She uh, helped write the archery grant. She's also put in for other grants. Uh, without the staff here, Eddie included, who we say, how can we shoot archery indoors without tearing up the walls? You know? And he comes up with the system uh, with the curtain provided, you know, to rig it up. So I want to take a few seconds to brag on my team that we're here tonight. Eddie works with Shirley. Um, we do the amphitheater events. None of this can be done without a great team. I just wanted to take a few seconds to put some of the, the spotlight on them. Thank you. I do have a motion. Uh, so we decided to have one several weeks early and 
the air donating the quarters that we will spread across the infields of two ball fields and then turn the kids loose on empty quarters. So it will be a sight to see, and it is Saturday, April 7th at 2 p.m. at Poplar Springs Ball Field, ages 6 to 12. Uh, hunt quarters on the infield and five and under will have a fun activity where they get to hunt and uh, Easter eggs and stairs and stuff. We have a motion to accept this donation. So moved. Commissioner, what I have for you this evening is uh, approval for a one-year extension uh, of our Everbridge mass notification system. Uh, the total cost for this is $16,876. This is the mass notification system that was installed in 2012, shortly after our tornadoes. Tornado. This is just a continuation of what we've had in place. It is, yes, sir. And currently we have uh, to check today 27,654 subscribers on the system. <coughs> Chairman, the first item that I have is the proposed approval of the retention agreement to substitute in attorneys for the county in the opioid litigation. The, the county is currently, along with a lot of other state and local governments, a member of a class action lawsuit that's pending up in Ohio against opioid manufacturers and distributors where we're seeking to recover increased costs that the opioid crisis has caused our emergency management and other departments to incur over the years to reimburse the county for those costs. Back in February of last year, the board approved an agreement to hire some attorneys who specialize in this type of litigation and they have been representing the county. But what has happened is the attorney general for the state of Georgia has hired that law firm to represent the state. And when 
that occurred, they could no longer represent any local governments, so they had to step aside. Uh, the law firm that has stepped aside is not claiming any fee or any expense reimbursement, and they've turned over all the work they've done to the county. Uh, the proposed agreement before you now is to hire the law firm of Brinson, Askew, Barry, Sigler, Richardson, and Davis out of Rome, Georgia, who also represents several local governments in our area in this type of litigation. Uh, they are willing to pick up the case and take it over. Their fee arrangement is the same as the previous law firm, which is a contingent fee arrangement, meaning that they only get paid if we recover any money. And if they, if we, if we recover money, their fee will be one third of their recovery. If we do not recover any money, we do not owe anything.
peak ambulances that they determine from emergency management standpoint what the peak call times or days could be, and they will make sure that in the three ambulances are what we are guaranteed to have here 24 7 each day, but there will also be other ambulances floating around at peak times to be sure they meet uh, the required response times. And, and correct, they will provide coverage for events such as high school football games, uh, live fire training uh, exercises or disaster training uh, as well under the agreement. They'll also transport uh, the sheriff's inmates at no additional charge. We'll do blood draws requested by law enforcement at no additional charge and several items such as that. So all that is wrapped into this one contract? Yes, sir. that lived is um, so yeah we're just gonna get out and clean some stuff up I'm looking forward to it um, I'll, I'll probably be out on the creek somewhere just because that's I I, I'd love to be out on the creek um, and uh, yeah it's such a great event I'm just honored to be a part of it and we have a great um, list last year we had a lot of rain but people were out working hard in the rain and so seeing people you know committed to making the community a better place just what a wonderful event and so to see it spread like this it's I, I appreciate everyone that's partnering and um, we're just happy to be a part of it.
Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd like to report on the revenue report for the fifth month of the current fiscal year ending February. Uh, lost receipts for the first five months of the fiscal year exceeded the budget 303,000, a 10.4%. Exceeded the same period prior year, 261,000, by 8.8%. The cumulative loss receipts for the most recent 12 months exceeded the prior 12 months, $510,000, or 7.3%. And the current month exceeded the same period prior year, $75,000, or 14%. On the SPLOS receipts for the 55 month period of the 2014 SPLOS cycle, we collected $45 million. 750,000, with currently running at 83.2% of budget. Splice receipts for most, of most recent 12 months exceeded the prior 12 months, 728,000, by 7.3%. Current month exceeded the same period prior year, 108,000, by 12.2%. But I'd also like to report on the uh, 2000, uh, the fifth month of the 2019 fiscal year. We're currently 41.67% through the current fiscal year. And revenue uh, before other financing sources and operating transfers for the five months ended February was 11,642,000. We're currently at 43.1% of budget. Therefore, it exceeded the budgeted revenue by $380,000, or 3.4%. And revenue was favorable to prior year, $793,000, or 7.3%. Expenditures before other financing uses and operating transfers out for the five month period were 10 million, 144,000, by 38.9% of budget, therefore less than budgeted expenditures, by 728,000, by 6.7%. Expenditures were unfavorable the prior year, 404,000, by 4.5%. After other financing sources, uses, and operating transfers out, revenue exceeded expenditures. 1,295,000, favorable to budget, 1,295,000, and favorable to prior year, 371,000. I might mention that uh, of that million, 1.3 million favorable uh, revenue represented about $380,000 favorable to budget, and the other 900,000 was due to expenditures being favorable to budget. So three hundred thousand more revenue with nine hundred approval. Yes, less than budget expenditures. Thank you, Paul. At this time we're going to move into new business and do some zoning cases. I'm going to accuse myself of the first case of Commissioner Cutler, our vice chair. Thank you, Chairman. The first case is going to be zoning case 1289-19, rezoning of tax map 38C, parcels 63 and 64 from R1 to CR. James? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, case number 1289-19, the applicant, James Gann, being represented by Rodney Waters, has requested his property located on Pollard Road be rezoned from R1 to CR. Mr. Waters would like to build some apartments or quadruplex on the property. The Planning Commission met in regards to the case on January 22nd and denied the request 3-4, one against, and one recused. The case was denied by the Planning Commission due to the fact that the request does not comply with the county future land use map and according to the county comprehensive plan, uh, 
we are to use the future land use map as a guideline on development projects for future growth of the county. Okay. Do I hear a motion to accept the planning commission's decision? We got it. Yes. Uh, Representatives for oh, I'm sorry. Before. Okay. <coughs> well, we'll get to that. Please. Anybody in favor of the request to rezone? Anybody opposed? see this happen uh, just so because I think it would be an improvement to the area. I think uh, I think it would be a need over there. Uh, I'm not 100 percent sure. I don't understand what the
the new road the city of Ringgold built, a lot of commercial through there, and then a new commercial building uh, almost right at that intersection in the county as well. So, uh, so the future plans for that area is, is not allowing more residential built there. Well, in that whole Paul Road area. The comp plan, in my opinion, from a planning standpoint, uh, I think there will be a lot of commercial in that area. That, that would, will need to be something we look at when we do our new comp plan. Uh, since Candy Lane has been installed, and there's that thoroughfare right along I-75, I see a lot more commercial going in there in the future. So well, what I'm getting at is right now it's all residential right there. I know exactly where right. it's at. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is you got at that point you're wanting to go from there all the way down, but you've got residential all the way around that already. Right. So how can you I mean how can that be I'm, I'm asking questions what I'm trying to say is how how can we do that? Well I'll I'll, I'll, I'll say that, that as far as the as far existing the, the county comprehensive plan uh, designates this particular area right now as suburban neighborhood. So the way it is right now, it's supposed to be suburban neighborhood, and what is allowed in suburban neighborhood is single family homes. So uh, in this particular area, that's just what's allowed right now. And so technically, you know, a, a CR does not fit single family homes. That's more of a multifamily. Uh, use. This was last update in 2011. I forget the exact date. Oh, right. it's, it's, it's around that time frame. We did our unified development code in 2012, and uh, just prior to that, we did our comp plan. So just 2010, 2012. The comp plan is a 20 year plan. It's right. every five years they it's do what they it's call updated. it a short term work program, right. short term update where we revisit different things. But it's in, a twenty year plan. Right. But James, Mr. Waters has to apply based on the comp plan as it stands now. Not, Correct. Not a few a futuristic, hey, it could be commercial, it could be not. Right. That's correct. So Mr. Waters, these pictures that you handed out, is this what your plan is? Yes, you very simple. Because you know, you're still going to have to go before James and submit more. more yes, sir. I'm aware of that. These, I tried to get my new uh, train conference survey for some of the work. And I tried to get him to kind of draw a little diagram that he's just so behind. He, he couldn't get this in time. Even though I've had an extra 30 days, I still couldn't get it. But this is what, similar, very similar to this is what I'm doing and what I'd like to do or ask him to do because it's kind of sloping down. It's kind of, you know, more towards the middle, you know, up Paul Road. And I think, it, you know, I know that's, I didn't, wasn't really aware of the comprehensive plan, but it's obviously old, and I would like to see it kind of out there, you know, updated. And I, in my personal opinion, I think it would be a good fit. Uh, you have the uh, big trailer park right behind it, which will always be there, and, you know, because the guy's, he's not going to get rid of it. There's been a lot of developers approaching trying to get it. And I just thought it'd be a good fit for the area myself. That's the reason I'm asking. How many units are you looking at? Put them just I'd like to do three. Three good with how many in each? Four. Four. Yes, sir. So that's two, twelve. 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 And I, I was, you know, obviously I'll start out with one. And if that's very successful, then you know, I'll the cover, which I think it will be. Uh, I own a couple of pieces of real property now. You know, they don't stay, they don't stay empty long. I mean, I've had, for example, all a piece of property in front of my residence that's a real piece of property in our park. And uh, the ladies want to move out. People should know we should have been there for a day or two. And I'm already getting phone calls from them. So I think there is a need. What, what's the basic size of these units? I mean, you got 12, because I'm familiar with the property and 12 seems like well, it's, I don't know the exact measurements, but from what I can figure based on the rules and regulations and all, I think if five could go there. 
but I'm, I'm not interested in that. Right. Sir. Did that be too many? Yes, sir. As far as the property won't fit it, with the zoning restrictions and everything. But you're planning on just 12. That's what I'm planning on, yes, sir. Start that with one. Yes, sir. Three 
three buildings. 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 Three
uh, as far as uh, one acre lot size. Uh, so it, it would go along when that development was constructed in the first place. Do we have anyone here for or against on this particular case? I'm for it. <laughs> well, that's a shock. <laughs> this, this is the property across from the elementary school? Yes, sir. Environmental health is signed off. There, there are a lot of soil issues as far as septic goes in that area. Uh, but environmental has signed off on these lots saying that septic will work. Okay. No one here to speak. We're going to have a motion. To a motion. To, to uh, approve. To approve. Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor of approving, say aye. 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 Case number 1292-19. The applicant, uh, Elizabeth Hawthorne Trust, has requested the property located on Bivens Lane be resumed from R1 to R3. Sorry, there's a pop up in there, I just realized. For development purposes, uh, it's tax map 38B, parcel 100A. Uh, the Planning Commission met in regards to the case on February 26th and approved the request for zero. The resumption does comply with the county complaint. Is there anyone here for or against on this particular case? Do I have a motion to approve or not? I make a motion to approve. I'll second. Any question for James? All in favor of approving, say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Commissioner, comments, gentlemen, do y'all have anything to say? Well, as a chairman, I'd just like to thank Shirley Smith for her kind donation of over $10,000 to the county. Uh, thank you so much for that donation, Shirley. Thank you very much. I'd like to say the same thing. Thanks to the Smith family uh, for the donation of Eric Jenner. It'd be, put good, it'd be put in good use for our, for our, for our kids and, and our uh, residents of our county. And I also want to thank uh, you know, the Tuscan County Rec Department for the job they're doing over there, uh, helping with the kids and you know for our future. And uh, you know, recreation needs are it's a great outlet for the kids in our community to uh, you know to keep, to keep you know being a child a kid and learning and you know transpiring into adults, you know, I, I want to thank y'all for the job you do, know, and, you know, it, I've dealt with y'all many times, and y'all done a great job for me, and I just want to commend on the job y'all doing, and trying to get the community involved. Uh, yeah, I'll echo that with the Smith family, and I appreciate it, and I look forward to a lot of events over there. We have a, a long history with uh, the colonnade, so, uh,